Hello. Uh, in this unit, we're going to talk about steering box and linkage steering systems. So uh, let's get to it. So we can have a look at a couple of different types of linkages here. Uh, parallelogram, the most common cross steer used in some uh, solid axle four wheel drive applications. Haltenberger, uh, made famous on uh, Ford uh, F and E trucks. Center steer, which we probably won't see. And of course, rack and pinion. We've uh, had a uh, uh, quite a discussion on rack and pinion already. I think this is uh, fairly well understood by now. Um, so we can move on to some of the other systems. So uh, Haltenberger, uh, as far as I know, it was only uh, Ford used this on uh, the uh, Econoline vans and uh, F series pickup trucks and things where they had a twin I-beam suspension. It's a fairly simple system, strong, durable, uh, they use essentially one long tie rod assembly that went from the steering box uh, off the pitman arm all the way to the opposite side. And then uh, somewhere around the middle of this link, uh, middle like halfway through the vehicle, you had another tie rod that went to the opposite side. It worked acceptably. It was strong and durable, but uh, the steering geometry wasn't that great. Uh, Ford is uh, not using any of these systems anymore, I don't believe, but there were many millions of them put into production, so you might still run into one. Uh, cross steer linkage. Uh, this is uh, used by all kinds of manufacturers on uh, vehicles with a solid front axle. So the solid steering axle uh, can use a fairly simplistic linkage. Uh, so in this case, we've got one tie rod essentially just goes from one side of the vehicle to the other, one knuckle to the other, and one link from the steering box down to the opposite side of the vehicle. Uh, Geometry wise, when you get suspension movement up and down, you do get uh, some disruption to the, the, the direction you're being steered. But again, it is simple, strong, reliable. Parallelogram steering linkage. It's uh, fairly complicated. It's got uh, quite a bit of, quite a number of parts to it. Uh, but uh, it gives you geometry wise the best performance. Um, and it is uh, seen the most wide use, I believe. Uh, Pretty much every manufacturer out there has used this at uh, one time or another. Uh, it was, you would probably consider it the standard steering mechanism for a long time. Um, so we just have the box, that steering box through the pitman arm hooks up to a center link assembly right here. That center link uh, transfers the side to side motion to your tie rod assemblies out to the wheels. The only thing that's really different here is we have a idler arm. Uh, the idler arm is a wearing component, so uh, that does have to be inspected on the vehicle. Uh, typically, it's moved up and down to see how much play it has. Uh, you should be aware, though, that uh, several manufacturers allow quite a bit of movement in that. Uh, so do look up specs when you check it. As far as all the tie rod ends and everything on all these systems, uh, other than Ford in some applications using a rubber injected uh, tie rod end, uh, all the rest of them would be the same as checking a tie rod end on a, on a rack system or something that you've already done. Okay, so the steering box, uh, this is what the guy looks like when it's installed in a vehicle. So this is actually installed on the frame here. This is your cross member. You can see the steering column. There's your pitman arm and then the center link going across uh, to complete your steering linkage. So what's inside a box? Well, we have in this area, so this is a cutaway or exploded view, I guess, um, uh, of a steering box. Now, we remember how uh, the hydraulics worked in a hydraulic steering rack. That's what we're looking at right here. This is a hydraulic control valve or a spool valve for uh, uh, controlling the hydraulic assist in a hydraulically assisted power steering box. So in this case, this valve would control the fluid uh, and if you can think back to the rack, how it would divert it to one side or the other side of the piston. In this case, it's, it's doing very similar, but the piston looks dramatically different. So we have here, this is our piston. We have a seal on it here. And we either want to put the high pressure fluid on this side and force this nut assembly that way, or we want to put the high pressure fluid on this side and force the nut assembly the opposite direction. Okay, and it's all just sealed through this Teflon ring right here. Okay, so that's hydraulically. Now, mechanically, um, we've got a, a, you know, a cutaway of a different steering box here. This is just a manual system, but we can see the nuts and bolts of how it works in here. So we have this worm shaft that goes down through the 
center of the uh, the box. It has threads cut into it, uh, but the threads are not like a regular nut and bolt. They actually are kind of a deep rounded groove and uh, it's filled with ball bearings. Now, the part that runs on the outside of that is called a ball nut, uh, and it has little uh, guides here to recirculate these balls. So they come, you know, they roll through one side, go through a loop and roll back into the other side as this shaft rotates. Um, and uh, hence we get the, the name recirculating ball uh, steering box. That This uh, ball nut assembly here, uh, when we turn the worm shaft, this ball nut is going to screw either this way or this way, depending on direction of rotation. It is geared to this uh, sector shaft. So the sector shaft, um, it will, you know, rotate left and right when you uh, turn the steering wheel. Okay, so what goes wrong with the steering box? Well, we've got one here. We can have a look at a couple of things. This is our sector shaft, sometimes called a pitman shaft. The pitman arm would attach to this. And this is the part that would swing left and right that would hook up to your center link or you know, well, most commonly center link and to your tie rods and everything. Now this has got hydraulic fluid inside of it and uh, on a power assisted box. So that hydraulic fluid can leak through these seals. This seal, uh, in my experience, has been the most common leak in a box. Uh, usually because this faces down towards the road, you get a lot of debris, salt, whatever up in there, and it causes corrosion and you start to get a leak from that seal. Uh, you can sometimes replace the seal. Uh, you pull a snap ring out, pull the seal out, put a new, you clean everything up, put the, a new seal in and put the snap ring back in. Uh, that doesn't always work because a lot of times the reason it's leaking is because of corrosion on the shaft uh, and uh, you know, with pits and scratches and things in it, uh, it's it's impossible to get it to seal again. So uh, sometimes you replace the whole sector shaft and, and the seal. Sometimes you just replace the box. Okay, we know we've got another uh, seal up here on the, our worm shaft. So our steering column would come down and hook up to this. Uh, and we can get leaks from there as well. Now, Mechanically, uh, we can get some wear inside the unit that makes it feel kind of sloppy. And uh, box and linkage systems are, they get a, a bad rap for being sloppy. And a lot of times it's just worn out components that need service. Uh, but in this case, this worm shaft, it sits between two bearings. Uh, and if there's wear in there, <clears throat> excuse me, if there's wear in there, the uh, uh, the shaft can start to move around and get sloppy and you, you lose you lose the accuracy of your steering. So what we have to do here is we've got a lock ring around here. Uh, we just simply back that lock ring off and then this adjuster plug, we put a pin wrench in these holes and we can rotate this adjuster plug in. And that will tighten the bearing up on the shaft, right? Uh, you should note that uh, if it's just a minor adjustment, you know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't hesitate to do it. But if there is a lot of slop in there, I would suspect there might be a bearing failure. And if they, you have a bearing failure, you're going to want to uh, likely replace the box. Okay, sector shaft adjustments. So this is another uh, adjustment we have here. So we've got uh, the adjusting screw in the center and then a lock nut on the outside. All I would do to adjust this is I would undo this nut. Uh, so I back that off a few turns and then you can put a hex key in here and rotate this shaft. Now this is hooked into the top of the sector shaft and if screwing this up and down will actually uh, raise and lower the sector shaft. So explain further. We will. So uh, what we have here is a worm screw. Uh, you can see it's threaded. The threads though are not like you know a regular V cut thread. They're rounded because there's ball bearings in here. Now this shaft sits between a couple of bearings, uh, as we saw in one of the previous little diagrams. So that cap at the end will uh, uh, adjust the play on, the, on the, those bearings and how much a shaft is allowed to move. This is the ball nut. If you look inside, you can see there's threads in there and they're the same type of thread as this. Again, this is filled with ball bearings. So uh, we see this little guide here and uh, what will happen when we rotate the shaft, the balls will circulate around and they'll recirculate through this 
back into the lead end of the of the uh, worm screw. Hence the name recirculating ball uh, steering system. Okay, now what we want to happen is when we rotate this shaft, it's going to screw this back and forth. If this is too loose, what we have is instead of the ball nut moving back and forth, this just moves back and forth and the ball nut stays steady. So the adjustment on this is important. Now, I will say that the adjustment procedure we're doing in the lab is kind of a quick and dirty adjustment. Um, uh, the, the, the real world procedure, if you're rebuilding a box, would be to uh, something like uh, install the worm shaft, adjust the worm shaft bearings, and then you would check the amount of preload on the bearings with a rotating torque. So you'd have a dial type uh, torque wrench, rotate it, and you'd change the preload until you got the correct amount of pressure on the bearings. Then you insert the uh, sector shaft or the pitman shaft if you prefer, uh, and you set the tooth engagement on that with the box centered, uh, and uh, uh, you, you would recheck the rotating torque to make sure you have the, the correct amount of, of tension on those gear teeth. Okay, so uh, beyond that, what we're going to do, like I said, is kind of a quick and dirty adjustment. So we see what's involved with the, the worm shaft. Now we'll just look at this. So we have our sector shaft and the ball nut. Now this is the cap from the box. We can see that this adjusting screw is actually threaded like into this cap. So if I loosen this nut and screw this up and down, that bolt is hooked into this. So I can actually move this shaft up and down inside of the steering box. We notice the angle on the teeth. The angle on the teeth is what's going to change the amount of lash between these gears. So if I adjust this upwards, I've got clearance between the gears. And if I adjust it down because of that angle, it tightens up. So I can change the amount of clearance between the gears by moving this vertically. Okay, so uh, the... Uh, clunk. The uh, uh, worksheet has a fairly good explanation for uh, how to accomplish these, these adjustments in the lab. Uh, but do remember, please, that this is a quick and dirty adjustment. Uh, if you're doing this in the world, you'd be well advised to use the service information for the particular application you're adjusting. Okay? This is exposure to and understanding, uh, not necessarily the right technique for every steering box. Okay? So uh, that's it. And... We'll see you in class. Bye for now.